Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on working with remote sensing with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and Virginia View. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. This video tutorial series builds on ongoing and previous collaborations and contributions provided by the USDA NIFA through the ADVANCE Project, the National Science Foundation, through the GeoTED UAS Project, the Ohio State University, and the Virginia Space Grant Consortium. This video series is associated with the Remote Sensing with ArcGIS Pro second edition book. We will use Landsat 9 imagery in this series, and we'll also begin with Chapter 10. Links to resources for this video series, including free access to the textbook and to the videos for chapters 1 through 9, are available in the video description below. Instead of an entire Landsat scene, the area of interest may only be one specific region within that scene or particular bands. The previous chapter provided instructions on generating a single composite image of all 11 Landsat 9 bands. In this chapter, we'll limit the aerial extent of the composited image to a specific region. This is known as subsetting an image, or in GIS terms, clipping, by clipping to the extent of the display and the other by clipping to a polygon. Finally, we'll create a composite image and clip in one step, and we'll talk about the differences between these two processes. Be sure you've completed Chapter 14 and you're familiar with those skills, and that you have the feature classes in your geodatabase that you imported from shapefiles in Chapter 5. See the description for this video for access to the data files. So to get set up, create a new map project in ArcGIS Pro and add bands 2 through 7 for the Roanoke, Virginia Landsat 9 image. These are the three visible, blue, green, and red, the near-infrared and short-wave infrared bands for Landsat 9 and are the only ones needed for our project. Create a composite image for these bands using the geoprocessing tool introduced in Chapter 14. Notice the name we chose. It tells us that the bands included are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 from Landsat 9. Next, we're going to limit the spatial extent of this image, also called subsetting or clipping. First, we'll demonstrate the Export Raster tool. Let's select the composite image in Contents, and notice this activates the tabs associated with rasters. Go to the Data tab on the ribbon and Export Raster to open the tool. Here you see that the composite image name automatically appears in Output Raster Dataset. Under Spatial Reference System and Clipping Options, you see the coordinate system for the composite image. And under Clipping Geometry, we see several options. Default is used when making changes, such as to the coordinate system. Current display extent clips to the extent you're zoomed in to the image. This is the option we'll use in this example. We would use as specified below if the coordinates for each corner of the desired region are known and we could enter them. The next item is same as layer, listing the name of our composite image and the names of the layers that are present in the project. If you have a layer such as a vector feature class or shape file with the boundaries of your study area, you can choose that layer as the option for clipping. We'll demonstrate this option later. Let's take a look at a few other parameters that populated when the tool opened. Under Raster Properties, Raster Size is the number of pixels in columns and rows present in the original image. Under the Render Settings and Compression Settings are additional options that are used for other types of processing. We'll leave those defaults. Now that we've reviewed the tool, let's set some parameters. First, we'll clip to the extent that is displayed in the Map Viewer. Zoom in to the area of the image that includes the City of Roanoke white circle, the Christiansburg-Blacksburg area, the red circle, and Smith Mountain Lake, blue circle. Now, in the Export Raster tool, under Spatial Reference System and Clipping Options, choose Current Display Extent from the Clipping Geometry. ArcGIS Pro automatically changes it to, as specified below, and adds the coordinates to limit the extent. Notice the rows and columns in the original image compared to the rows and columns here. We are clipping the original scene to a smaller aerial extent. Leave all the other parameters as default and export the image. When the tool is finished running, we have a new layer in contents with the same name as the composite, 
but with a .tiff extension. And the new image is displayed in the map window. Let's close Export Raster Tool and turn off the original composite image. Right-clicking on any of the individual Landsat images and zooming to the layer, we can see that the new image is indeed a subset of the original extent. Now pause this video and try your hand at subsetting the composite again to just the extent for Roanoke, Virginia. When you resume, I'll walk you through it. Here's the process again. Zoom into Roanoke. Here I'm going to use a bookmark. Make sure you have your original composite selected. I'm going to turn this one off just so we're not confused. Go to Data, Export Raster, and choose Current Display Extent from Clipping Geometry and Export. This is what the results should look like. This is your new clipped version of the original composite showing only Roanoke. Notice these names aren't so great. We should probably rename those as part of the process. We'll do that in the coming examples. So let's try two more methods for clipping, beginning with clipping to a polygon. Let's clean up our environment here a little bit. So I'm going to turn off and collapse the symbology for each of these TIFF files. Leave this on. This is our original one. Let's go back to our original scale. I can turn this off because I don't really need them. And to clip to a polygon, we need to add a polygon feature class that represents the spatial extent of the area that we want to clip to. In this example, we have two polygon feature classes to demonstrate the process in our GeoDatabase. So let's head on over to Catalog and go to our GeoDatabase. And here are the feature classes that we imported from Chapter 5. We're going to need the Montgomery County and the Roanoke, Virginia feature classes. Now we're ready to clip by our polygon features. Again, select the original composite image in Contents. Open the Export Raster tool. And we'll change the name of the output raster to reflect our Montgomery County, Virginia clip. And under Clipping Geometry, we'll choose that Montgomery County, Virginia layer. Let's ensure Use Input Features for Clipping Geometry is checked and Export. Here you see a new layer in Contents, and we have a new image in the Map Viewer. We can turn off the Polygon layer to see it. Notice, however, it's more than the county outline. Dark pixels surround the Landsat scene are not brightness values. This is the GIS's attempt to make the image have the same aerial extent at its corners. In other words, all images are rectangles, and these outer border areas are black because the cells have no data associated with them. These black borders can be hidden, in other words, made transparent, and the best way to do that is to change some settings before clipping the image. Let's do that now. Let's go to Project, Options, Raster and Imagery, and Expand Appearance. Let's check the box before Display Background Value, and be sure it's set for No Data or No Color, and the same No Color for No Data. And OK. Let's go back to our project. Now let's do the clip one more time for Montgomery County, Virginia. I'm going to uncheck this and collapse it. Select this. Our tool is still open. So we'll rename this. We will select the same feature class. We'll make sure we're using input features and export. This time, although you can't see it very well, you can if I turn off this. Now you can see that Montgomery County outline is what shows up in our clip. The no data pixels are not displayed. Now let's repeat the clipping process again using the feature class for Roanoke, Virginia. Pause this video now and try your hand at clipping using the Roanoke feature class. 
I'll show you how when you get back. Okay, so I'm going to turn off and collapse all of the other layers and select the original composite. I'll select the original composite image and our export raster window is still open, but know that you go there by data, export raster. We'll name this Roanoke Clip. We'll choose our clipping geometry of Roanoke VA. We'll make sure to use those input features and we will export. Notice we have a new TIFF file over here. And if we turn off the Roanoke, Virginia, I'm going to collapse that and we turn on the Montgomery County, Virginia clip and we'll turn off the original composite. We can now see our two new clipped areas. Let me turn the background back on. We use the same composite image for subsetting both areas, but the images look different in color. Well, when subsetting, we may reduce the variation in brightness values. So the range across which the values are displayed differ in the two images from the original and even from each other. We can view how these ranges differ in the statistics category for the source in layer properties. You can see that the range of brightness values between the bands, say band one in the two images is very different. Now let's try creating a composite image and clipping at the same time. Let's do a bit of cleanup again. I'm going to collapse and turn off all the layers that we don't need. So I'm going to turn off this one, collapse it. I'm going to turn off this one, this one I do need. And I'll keep the vector layer for Montgomery County, Virginia and this original composite image. Then I'm going to zoom to the original extent using a bookmark. And in this process, we're going to go to the Analysis tab and choose Environments from the Geoprocessing group. So from this Extent of a Layer drop-down, we're going to choose the desired extent, Montgomery County, Virginia, and here we see that the coordinates for that extent appears right here. And we'll go to OK. So we're setting up our environment for this particular process. Now let's open the Composite Bands Geoprocessing tool, which just happens to be in my Recents. And we'll redo the composite using only bands 2 through 5. So I'll use this drop-down because I can select those bands from the drop-down. So it's 2, 3, 4, 5. So 2, 3, four and five. I'm going to double check that they're checked over here and I'll add those bands and I'll run. Okay, so we're finished. Here's our new layer. And if I turn off my Montgomery County and I turn off bands two through seven, we can see that there's a difference in this clipping method. The new clipped image is a rectangle not the shape of the county outline as it was in the previous clipping method. In environments, when we chose the Montgomery County layer as the input, it clipped using the corner coordinates for upper left, upper right, lower left, and lower right, which resulted in this rectangle. Of the approaches, which you choose is dependent on your project. This approach provides a subset of a general rectangular region, while the first approach offers a subset of a user-defined extent, which could include irregular boundaries, like Montgomery County did, or a watershed or political boundary. So now that you know how to subset a composite image, let's proceed to more details of Landsat 9 band combinations in the next chapter, Chapter 16, Band Combinations Using Landsat 9 Imagery.